Hi, I'm Rick Backus with Superior Driveline. In this segment, I'll be showing the procedures to changing the bearings on a shaft master. First, we're going to check the condition of the socket chuck. We have a socket chuck checker. We will install that, tighten it down. Do not over tighten the set screw. Using our indicator, we're going to first check the condition of the outside of the socket chuck. We should get virtually nothing on that, and that's what we get. This is a brand new machine. If there was run out on that, you could have a problem with the bearings. Now to check the socket chuck, we're actually going to put the indicator at the end of the checker, and we're going to check run out there. Being a brand new socket chuck, we only get a couple thousandths run out on that. If we get more than five to seven thousandths run out on the end of this shaft, you know that the socket chuck is getting a taper or bell mouth to it, and you could possibly need to think about replacing the socket chuck. Now we will proceed with taking out the socket chuck to replace the bearings. With this machine, it has the option of the auto weld on it. For video purposes, I have actually removed the auto weld assembly, but we still have the pulley on here, which we'll need to loosen up. Now that we have our aluminum pulley loose, we can slide that back socket chuck towards the motor and we will remove our snap ring. I like to leave the snap ring pliers on the snap ring, leave it in place for future assembly. Now that we have that done, we need to remove the set screws on our drive shaft coupler. There's one on each side of the coupler. Now that we have the set screws out, there is a quarter inch roll pin inside there. We need to drive that most of the way out. Now that we have our roll pin loose, we can slide our socket chuck out. Now, to change the bearings in the bearing cage, we're simply going to rotate the cage to the floating position. We're going to pull out on our dial indicator shaft and pivot the cage out of the support. Now that we have our bearing cage out, we'll set that to the side and replace the stationary bearing. We have a belt support we'll need to remove and the bearing retainer for the stationary bearing. Now that we have our bearing retainer off, we'll need to remove the bearing. It's a slight press fit of the bearing in the bore, but they can be tight. If they are, we use three of these 832 socket head screws, and we actually put them in the holes right here and we'll use three of them, and they will be used as jack bolts. Simply tighten down each of the screws, and that will eventually jack the bearing out of the bore. And there we have, we've taken our stationary bearing out. Now that we feel the condition of the bearing, Obviously this one feels good because it is new, but you would feel some roughness in that. Uh, you might have noticed some noise in the bearing when it was running. We'll clean up the surface where the bearing goes. Sure there's no contaminants or anything in that area. We have our new bearing and we'll reinstall that.
Now that we have the new bearing in, we'll reinstall our bearing retainer. Evenly tighten each of the three bolts. Now that we have our stationary bearing replaced, we can clean up the bearing cage support in this area. It can get burred up. It can get pitted with contaminant. So take a file or emery cloth and dress up these areas as need be. The radius insert can get burred up also. Over time, this can also develop a flat spot and you may want to replace the radius insert. The upper area is the same. While you have the bearing cage out, you'll want to check the condition of the dial shaft knob assembly. Make sure this plunger is free and springs in and out properly. The same with our dial indicator. Make sure that that moves freely. We'll take some of our straight 10 weight oil and we'll put a, a little bit on the radius area. It's a little tough to get to on the top, so we'll put that on the finger and lubricate that area. Now that we have our bearing cage out, we're ready to take the bearings out of the cage. Simply start by removing the ball spacers and set screws. Set those to the side. Remove our six socket head bolts. Simply turn and take the top retainer off and we have exposed our bearings. We need to look and see how the bearings are mated together before we take that apart. You'll note that the writing on the outside race of the bearing is facing out. Simply take the bearing cage assembly, flip that over and tap it and the bearings will fall right out. Now you'll note the opposite side also, the riding on the outer race of the bearing is out also. When you bring the bearings apart, you'll notice that the most open part of the bearings are together. They must be sandwiched together properly for proper fit. With the bearings out of the cage, we'll want to thoroughly clean the inside of the bearing cage. If the Teflon seal is damaged, we have replacement seals for that, and you can replace those at this time also. Inspect your bearing cage retainer also. Remove any contaminant that is built up on those. Again, replace the Teflon seal if it's become damaged. With our new bearings, we're going to give those a coat of oil. We're going to put a coat of oil inside the bearing cage. Now we're ready to install our bearings. They will fall in fairly easy, but a slight tap to get them perfectly aligned may be necessary. Again, make sure you mate the bearings together properly. The Teflon seals do have a lubrication hole in them. When you put the bearing retainer on, make sure that hole is in the same side of the bearing cage. When putting in the six screws, I'd like to put a small amount of medium strength blue Loctite on them. Again, lightly tighten the bolts down we will do our final tightening when we have it back in the bearing cage support. With our bearings replaced in our bearing cage, we're ready to put the bearing cage assembly back into the bearing cage support. We reverse the procedure, grab the dial indicator shaft, Gently set the bearing cage into the support 
and gently rotate that into the locked position. Before we slide our socket chuck in, we're going to get a little bit of lubrication on the inner race, on the main bearings, and on the stationary bearing. Now we're ready to slide our socket chuck back into the assembly. At this point, I need to now go back and tighten the bearing cage retainer bolts properly. We started with just lightly tightening those before. We're going to gradually tighten each one of them. And we're going to rotate the, key, uh, the socket chuck in and out. We want to make sure that we don't over tighten the bolts on the retainer because that can have a tendency to lock up the bearings or put too much of a drag on the bearings on the socket chuck. Make sure that the socket chuck moves freely and it doesn't want to grab the bearing cage and make it go in and out with it. If it does, you have the bearing cage bolts too tight. We have to remember to put in our components like the auto weld pulley and make sure that our auto weld belt is in the proper position. If you were changing bearings uh, and you would want to check the condition of your auto weld belt and this would be a good time to replace that. Simply slide the auto weld pulley onto the socket chuck. Then you'll have to align the drive coupling on the other side. Hold that up so that you get the drive coupling to slide onto the end of the small shaft and the end of the socket chuck. I use a tapered punch put through the hole. That way I can feel that both holes are lined up and centered. Now with that centered, gently rotate both pieces over together and I will be able to drive my roll pin through both parts. Try to roughly center the roll pin into your drive coupling. Then we reinstall our set screw on both sides of the drive shaft coupler sandwiching the roll pin in between. Roughly get your set screws even when you tighten those down. Okay now we have our drive shaft coupling installed. We can concentrate on putting the snap ring back on. Now with the snap ring on, you'll want to slide the pulley back up to the snap ring and retighten those set screws. The bearing replacement on the tail end is exactly the same, except we just remove the snap ring on this end. We can rest it up here and we don't have to take apart the any type of a coupler that goes to the motor so the socket chuck will just simply slide out do the same procedure as replacing the bearings on this end thank you for watching i'm rick backus if you have any questions please contact us at superiordriveline.com